I'm sure the majority of you watching this video today enjoy having a drink occasionally. Maybe it's a happy hour after work, or maybe it's out on the weekend with a group of friends. Maybe even when you're at a Chiefs game. In fact, I know that 85.6% of Americans have consumed alcohol. But I bet no one has revealed the damaging effects that drinking does to your brain. It's perhaps one of the most well-kept secrets in all of medicine. Let's talk about the numbers first, and then we're gonna go into the science of what alcohol actually does to your brain, why you feel the way you do when you consume it, and why you feel the way you do afterwards. So let's talk the numbers. 85.6% of Americans have consumed alcohol. And of that number, 26% binge drink. They just go out on the weekend and get completely plastered. In fact, 14.5 million Americans age 12, age 12 and up have alcohol use disorder. This is the consumption of alcohol that is affecting their everyday life. Getting up in the morning, going to work, going to school, studying. And we can break those numbers down even further. 414,000 youth aged 12 to 17 have alcohol use disorder. They're consuming en enough alcohol that this is affecting what they do every day. In fact, 163,000 males have alcohol use disorder. And you know what's even more shocking? Yeah, you may think drinking is a male predominant problem. 252,000 females age 12 to 17 have alcohol use disorder. That's almost double what young men have. This is alarming. Alcohol is also the fourth leading preventable cause of death in the United States. Preventable, I might stress. The economic burden. How much does alcohol affect the economics of the US? jobs lost, time off of work, people getting sick, people dying from this, motor vehicle accidents. How much economic burden, if we were to put this in money, does this cost the US every year? $265 billion. I can't imagine that amount of money. I can imagine the amount of destruction a hurricane can bring. In fact, Hurricane Katrina, in order to recover from Hurricane Katrina, it cost $190 billion. That means that alcohol is almost double the damage of a hurricane. But look, the cost of money, the effect it has on our lives, it pales in comparison to how much money the people make who produce, manufacture, sell, and market alcohol. This is a $1.5 trillion money making addiction. Let's talk about how it works in the brain. Your brain has trillions of complex interactions. It has hundreds of thousands of millions of neurons working together in unison, in networks throughout the entire brain. Alcohol poisons and inhibits the function of those networks. Let's break this down to a very cellular level because that is where alcohol's poisonous effects are the most prevalent. There has to be an opposition in all things. And this is perhaps the best way to understand this. You have got two different types of receptors in your brain that are affected by alcohol. The first type of receptor is something called a GABA receptor. Now, what I mean by a receptor is if you have a membrane, you have a door in and out of this membrane. This door is the receptor. GABA receptors function to inhibit, to depress, to suppress what your brain function does. So when a GABA receptor gets activated, it causes an inhibitory signal. Alcohol binds onto this GABA receptor and it keeps the door open. In keeping that door open, you get more and more and more suppression or inhibition of brain function. It depresses your brain. So in other words, alcohol makes it more inhibitory. It depresses your brain function. 
In fact, if you think about it, this is like letting a lot of negative people into your home. Chloride is a negative ion that gets rushed into your brain when you perpetuate or keep the GABA receptor open. It's not just alcohol that functions this way. This is how anesthetics work. If you're gonna go in for a surgery, if we're gonna give you a medicine that's gonna knock you out and put you under in order to cut you open, we saturate GABA receptors. In fact, this is one of the dangers that alcohol possesses. It can be a grave danger because individuals who drink alcohol can become drowsy. They can become sedated. In fact, you may have seen somebody pass out or black out from drinking alcohol because they have so much suppression from their GABA receptors. And there are parts of the brain that are affected by this that can actually lead to death. This can suppress your respiratory drive, your ability to breathe to the point where you pass out and die. We talked about being equal or opposite in things. And opposition is found in these neural receptors with glutamate. A glutamate receptor is an excitatory receptor. When glutamate receptors are stimulated, they cause excitable effects. They ramp you up. They allow you to think quicker, more clearly. They excite other neurons. Well, what happens when alcohol binds, the glutamate receptor, is that it makes it less excitable. So not only does alcohol suppress or make inhibition of neurons even more inhibited, it takes the excitable neurons and prevents them from being excitable. This is what leads to the depression that is so prevalent and associated with alcohol consumption. It's also what causes the inhibition. It affects different parts of the brain differently. So let's summarize what we just covered. Your brain is made up of trillions of complex interactions and networks. Alcohol consumption poisons and inhibits the brain. Look, it poisons the brain to the point where you've seen that individual that can't even stand up or walk. I've never had alcohol before, but I've seen individuals who have consumed alcohol to the point where it's inhibited parts of their brain that makes them so they can't walk, they can't stand up straight, their speech is all messed up. In fact, you may have even seen somebody that their brain function has been inhibited so bad that it's made them black out or pass out. GABA receptors get bound by the alcohol. It leads to increased inhibition. Glutamate receptors, alcohol binds to them. It decreases their excitability. And this is also how anesthetics work. I mean, think about it. Back in the day, that's how we used to put people to sleep or numb them up enough that we could cut them open. We flooded them with alcohol. Why would you consciously choose to do this? Now that you know what's actually going on with the neural receptors in your brain. But look, I have an answer for that. Because alcohol also has another effect. And perhaps people say that they get some pleasure from alcohol. How does that work? Alcohol stimulates dopamine release in your brain. Dopamine affects the pathways of reward and pleasure seeking. At the same time, dopamine also increases and stimulates the release of serotonin. And you've heard about serotonin before. This is what antidepressant medications are used for. They increase serotonin. So alcohol increases dopamine and increases serotonin. And perhaps, I don't know, I've never had alcohol. That's what makes people like drinking but they don't actually know what's going on to their brain and the damage that it can cause. You see, I've seen brains of individuals, older individuals. I've seen brains of Alzheimer's patients. And I've seen the brains of people who drink too much alcohol but didn't even consider themselves alcoholics. And those brains look the worst. I think the reason is, and in fact, I know why this happens. It's because dopamine and serotonin drive neuro and behavioral habituation. Think about it this way. If I'm the brain and you keep blocking my GABA receptors, if you keep blocking my glutamate receptors from doing their normal function, I'm gonna make more and more of these receptors. 
The more and more receptors I make, the more and more alcohol you have to consume in order to have the same feeling that you have. This is fake. It's artificial stimulation of your dopamine and serotonin pathways. And the more and more you drink, the more habituation you get. You start forming habits. Well, I'm not an alcoholic. I only drink on the weekends. Well, now I'm drinking every weekend. See what I'm talking about? In order for me to relax and have a good conversation with my friends, I have to hold something. It's got to be a can in my hand. You have now formed a habit in your neuro circuits and in your social behaviors. And these habits then perpetuate a dependency. You start to think you can't enjoy that Chiefs game unless you have a beer. You think you're not going to be able to really get along or socially interact with the people unless you have something to drink before or during or after. The habituation leads to the dependence and soon it leads to addiction. And this is perhaps the saddest part of everything. If you knew that with that first drink of alcohol, you would cause cerebral atrophy, literal shrinkage of your brain by poisonous consumption, would you ever have drank? Because you see, you've created an artificial environment you're not seeing things as they really are. Do you really like the person that you're talking to? Or do you like the effects that alcohol is causing in your brain? Alcohol prevents you from seeing things as they really are. Your relationships, your interactions, your ability to get in a car and drive home safely. One person every 45 minutes one person every 45 minutes dies from a motor vehicle accident because alcohol is involved in it. One every 45 minutes. Hundreds of thousands of people die each year from this brain poison. I plead with you. Stop alcohol consumption. Save your brain. You don't need the poison. You can stimulate dopamine and serotonin release in natural, normal, physiological ways. And we've talked about it on prior videos, and we'll talk about it again. Thank you for watching and joining us today. If you've liked this video, if you've learned something from this video, like, subscribe, get notified, and make sure you share this with your friends.